Hello, my fellow human beings, and welcome to year five ah, of the Best Blessed Life. I'm your best host, Kristen, and today's topic is s'more cake, s'more celebrating. We celebrated the end of year four with a lovely cottage cheese cheesecake that turned out pretty darn scrumptious. I had some tweaks, I think, instead of putting the Oreos on the top, I would probably use like an Oreo crust. And then I thought about mixing things in, more things into it as well. Hey, before we get started, I wanna thank you all for watching. Please continue to watch, comment, share, like, subscribe, ring that bell, and please pass them on to anyone you think they would help. With that being said, here's our list of things to do today. For year five, I have replaced the positive affirmations with a daily compliment and usually obviously a positive thing of course so i am calling it spread the kindness and uh hopefully it catches on i'm trying not to use my hands as much because as you can see i have a new uh camera aimed at the counter so you can all y'all can see what i'm doing we're gonna talk about starting anew. Although this is the fifth year, kind of feels like a fresh beginning. I had my daughter share the uh, last episode I just did on Reddit. Twenty-two likes. And I got a lot of constructive criticism that was so helpful. I think that was the most positive part about the whole thing is that it helped me to establish kind of what I want to do going forward. And this is just the beginning and you know I'm going to be keep, keep tweaking as I go along. Learning. That's what this show is really all about. I know I had one comment about it being too religious based and I just kind of went because I put blessed in the title of the show or was there more religious connotation that I did not remember um, but I want people to know that blessed doesn't mean religion it just means that you're grateful for your life and how you're working it and keeping a balance is all part of that that's kind of what starting a new is going to be about and we're making a s'more cake it is kind of a practice run, this cake and its frosting and its fillings have a total of eight and a half sticks of butter. So I am going in the complete opposite direction with this cake, but it is a practice birthday cake for one of the kids I babysit for. First, I'm gonna go over the, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of daily affirmations left to read, and then we're gonna start off the, the compliments. And uh, you'll kind of get the gist of what I mean. Um, you need to be following me on Facebook at Kristen Haas, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-H-A-S-S, -S, and on Instagram at The Best Blessed Life and on Twitter at the best blessed life, but life is spelled with a one. Starting with the 23rd of August, and it says, today I celebrate the day's wins and free myself of what no longer serves me. If I made a mistake, I forgive myself. The 24th, today I will be the best person I know how to be. The 25th, I allow myself to be more fully me. The 26th, I am worthy, wonderful, and wise. 27th, I can do it. 28th, I attract positivity and beauty into my life. 29th, I deserve an amazing day. The 30th, I'm awake and ready to take charge. 31st, I will make today incredible. This is the positivity movement. Pay someone a compliment. So this first one is, your smile is contagious. The second, you have the best laugh. Third, you have a great sense of humor. The fourth, you light up the room. Fifth, you're like sunshine on a rainy day. Sixth, you bring out the best in other people. Seventh, there's just something about you that shines. 
The eighth, you always know what to say to make me feel better. The ninth, being around you is like a happy little vacation. The tenth, you're like a breath of fresh air. The eleventh, you're someone's reason to smile. Twelfth, I love your style. Thirteenth, you are strong. The fourteenth, you are beautiful inside and out. Fifteenth, you are a great listener. Sixteenth, the there are so many different things that make you really interesting. The 17th, you are inspiring. The 18th, you are so thoughtful. And today, you seem to really know who you are. Reminder, especially for my new viewers, hello, welcome, that every recipe that I make for you, me, for you, I make for the very first time. So that's why I say this is a practice run. I have never made this s'more cake before. It's actually called the ultimate s'more cake. And to top it all off, it has a toasted marshmallow fluff buttercream. And it has a graham cracker crumble. And, and a ganache. Okay, so I, like I said, I have already whisked the milk and the egg and all that stuff. The first step. We got the paddle attachment. We're gonna do all the dry ingredients in here. I would that. Okay, so it's the flour. Okay. The sugar. Oh, get in there. The crushed fine graham cracker. And our six ounces of softened butter. Add flour, sugar, crushed graham cracker, oh, baking soda, baking powder, salt. Oh, see, I would have made a big mess. All right, so that all goes in there. And then the paddle attachment, no butter. This is just a couple of seconds to get all the dry stuff. Just to get this all incorporated, well not all incorporated, but a little incorporated. Okay. Now, I know she said finely crushed graham crackers, but I have some decent amount of chunks in here, so hopefully it's not gonna be the end of the world. We're gonna add the room temperature butter to the flour mix and mix on low one to two minutes or until texture begins to look like coarse sand. So, let's plop this in here. How y'all doing? Did you miss me? I miss y'all. I love learning new stuff. It's intimidating, I'll give you that, but it's also well worth it to learn um, while you're being watched because then anybody can comment and tell me, you know, next time maybe you should try this or that or the other thing. Feel free to comment, I'm willing to listen. I take criticism pretty well. So, this is an interesting way to make a cake too, I find that I, every time I've made a cake, I feel like the steps have been a little different every time. So it's kind of interesting to learn everyone's different process and why they do, you know, kind of what, or why they put it together the way they do. Now, I'm really interested to learn why she feels that it's most important for everything to be room temperature. It'll be um, cooked by the time I get it in there. All right, I think we can go up a notch. But, I've learned new techniques, I've learned new ways, new um, healthier ways to make cake. So I feel like there's some, you know, good things happening. I just have to learn the more production side of YouTube, which is way more intimidating. All right, I think that was about two minutes. I could be wrong. Um, I don't really need to scrape the bowl. I don't know why, maybe I did something wrong. But it says to scrape the bowl. I'm... Smells amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. 
All right, I hope this works out. Because it's something different. You know, you make birthday cakes, they ask for chocolate, vanilla. So, I'm trying to think outside the box. And I'm gonna get to those challenges in just a minute. I have three new challenges for you for the year. Oh, it wasn't quite too many. But I love learning with you guys, and I think it's really important that we keep learning together. So I added the butter, I finished that up, and then I also did the one third of wet mix into the flour mix and mixed on medium for two minutes. So we scraped the side of the bowl, and now while on low, I'm going to stream the rest of this mixture into the dough that's already here, and then increase the speed to medium and mix until combined. All right, so I'm gonna go and resume on low, and I'm gonna slowly, this is the first time I've ever streamed anything before. It's nice because it's not super loud. I like this mixer. It tends to be, you know, um, quieter than my KitchenAid. All right, nice and smooth. I gotta increase the speed now. And that gets mixed on medium for a couple minutes. That's not horrible, right? So that's what starting a new means to me is like getting back on track, getting new ideas, getting things going, learning <laughs> as we go. It's so important. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing and kind of what's gonna make this year great. So we mix till just combined. I'd probably say another couple minutes. And then we're gonna divide it between these two pans right here. I have this big square one and this smaller square one. And ironically, they're both seven inches. So we'll see how that works. I want to give it a taste test here. Definitely graham crackery. I didn't think that seven ounces would make that big of a difference, <laughs> but it really, really does. Wow. I guess it's equal parts flour and graham cracker. So I want to get this, make sure it's all blended well here. Let's make sure I got everything off the bottom. Oh, there's one of my voice again. Okay, yeah, it's a nice texture. And this one, everything was in ounces. So when I first read that there was 24 ounces of butter, I'm just like, okay, no problem. Problem. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. And then, let's see here. It's gonna be hard to distinguish because the sizes are so different. But as long as I can fit, I'm not really too worried about the size of the layers. I just wanted to see how it comes out. All right. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna take a quick break to clean up what I've got going so far because we have other stuff to make, so I won't be gone too long. The next thing we're gonna get ready is the graham cracker crumble. I don't know why she calls it a crumble. They're square. I don't know, I could picture crumble being round for sure. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix and I think I'm gonna mix it right on the cookie sheet because I'm not recalling her saying, yeah, it doesn't say anything about like um, greasing it. So I figured if I spread it out and then like mixed it with my hands, like I got some decent size crumbs here along with some fine bits. So I'm thinking they're all gonna kind of meld together. I'm gonna drizzle this. Like I said, this show is about balance. And yes, we wanna be healthy, and yes, we wanna take good care of our bodies, but it's also about finding 
you know, a way to, a way to have a little bit of both to feel, you know, like when you're having a bad day, I know a re food reward isn't always the greatest, but sometimes, you know, it's just warranted. Just like a retail therapy day is sometimes warranted. So if you can see, I'm just kind of mixing it around on my cookie sheet. And I figured I, if I have to bake this six to eight minutes and it needs to cool in between while I'm making the frosting, I can be, you know, cooling this off. So I figured, why not? So we got that all spread out. I think it's kind of evenly dispersed butter-wise. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Smells delicious. I'm gonna start eating graham crackers with butter on them. <laughs> or maybe I'll just have graham cracker crumble on everything. That's a good balance, right? <laughs> Oh gosh, okay. I'll pop that over there. And this goes in for six to eight minutes. So hopefully that won't mess with our cake at all. Pick it up nicely already. Okay. All right, so I also figured we could get our marshmallows spread out on a cookie sheet. Because once that comes out, we're gonna bring we're gonna broil our, our marshmallows. So, eek! It would help if I had a cookie sheet that had some sides on it. Okay, new plan. <laughs> We're moving this stuff over here. Have it all ready for when it's time. Yeah, six sticks of butter. God, this is crazy. Crazy. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I'm gonna do my marshmallows on a cookie sheet that has a silk pad on it. And then hopefully that will keep the marshmallows from sticking. And this is way easier to do than spreading out marshmallow fluff. Let's just uh, ruined like the texture of the buttercream because one I've picked marshmallows over fluff I do have some fluff I can add if it I just didn't have enough and I'm like why am I gonna spend my time spreading out fluff when it's a lot easier to spread out marshmallows um, the other thing is is if you are gonna use the fluff the the silpat might be the way to go so you got that going for you too all right, so we got that taken care of. I think maybe this is a good time to go over the challenges real quick. I try to offer um, ways to challenge it ourselves. I'm trying to figure out where to go every year. Um, and this is the challenges I came up with for this year. It's think outside the box. Um, I can't even read it. Set new goals daily and take baby steps, literally. So I know you know that I don't necessarily mean literally, literally, but we all panic. Well, I don't know if we all do, but I panic when um, the goals that I've set for myself don't seem to fall into place. and. A lot of times it stresses me out, it gives me anxiety, I cry a lot, and um, I talk things out. I have good sounding boards with my kids, and I think the main thing that I have to remember with the baby steps is that baby steps are different for each person, and what you consider a baby step might not be a baby step for me. I might need a big smaller one and some other people might think okay if I do this move that'll get me in the right direction and then and I'll be looking at them going right direction sounds like you know a, a great you know leap to me so everybody's baby steps are different but I want you to kind of think about your goals 
as these little, you know, movements. Even if it's just in your head, they're little movements, but in real life, they're big movements. Um, because if you think of them as small, if something backfires or happens to go wrong or whatever, then you're like, okay, I'm okay. A little bit of a backslide is fine. It's learning, you know? We never fail, we learn. And that's always been what, or at least what I've tried to put in my brain most of the time. Um, so to, to calm yourself and maybe make the anxiety go away a little bit, that is what I have done. And I don't know if that might help another person. I hope so, because it has helped me tremendously. And um, I like to share those things that I've learned and tips and tricks that I've used that have helped me move forward and how I've kind of recuperated from a little backslide, which is just a lot of times just sitting and regrouping and thinking, uncontrollable amounts of thinking and sometimes talking it out. Sometimes I've come up with a poem. Sometimes I've written myself a little like blurb. I've gotten to the point where, you know, the last couple of years I did kind of a daily journal as one of the challenges. And because of the fibro, it has been kind of a daunting task. So I have been speaking my journal a little bit on my phone here and there. So I don't forget things. And I set goals, I put my goals on there. Um, it's just a way to carry them around with you because who leaves home without their phone? This gal sometimes. Um, but it's also just a good way to have that, that trigger to go, oh, let me write that down. And mentally it's a write down, but you know, physically you're just, I, I speak them. I don't even text it at all. So it's been a great um, tool to use. So I wanted to share that little bit of tip with you. And I think that the journal became a little bit too daunting as well. So that's why she didn't make the challenges list this year. Thinking outside the box is like when you have that little backslide, what can we switch it up with? What differently could you do to make it, make it better? Maybe not fix it completely, but maybe you can make it better. And then the middle one, set new goals daily, is that you have to readjust. And a lot of times it's daily. So don't be freaked out. Set yourself goals daily. And then when things get wackadoodle, as I like to call them, um, a lot of times it, it's just a matter of next day, okay, this is the new goal and let's go forward. And that has helped me tremendously as well. So I'm hoping that little bit will keep you motivated to uh, keep sharing with me. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna be working on is the cho um, chocolate ganache. So we have, how many ounces? 24 ounces of um, chocolate chips. They said Hershey's, but it doesn't really matter. And I really don't think that 15 seconds is enough, but we'll see how it works out. And in the meantime, our cakes are finishing up. One actually finished up a smidge earlier. So let me give you a sneak peek. She's back here, um, just chilling out. Oh, I spilled some chocolate chips. But there she is in all her glory. Oh, it smells just like a gigantic graham cracker. I was gonna say chocolate chip. Um, so that one's cooling, and we're supposed to cool it to just barely warm. This is the heavy cream that's gonna go in for like 30 seconds. I put our crumble back in because it felt like she didn't get quite um, toasty enough being on the bottom shelf. But once I took out that smaller, I gotta find you the smaller cake pan. I could put them side by side. So yeah, this didn't really do anything to these. I know it's not supposed to necessarily melt them, but it is supposed to make them warm. <laughs> They're not even warm. 
so that is now the timer for the other cake. We got them all going off at the same time. There we go. There's number two. Okay, she gets to sit back here and relax. And we're gonna take the crumble out, maybe. All right, let's work on the ganache first and then I'll put. Okay, well, there's a never a dull moment on the Best Blessed Life. Once again, the computer did a lot of messed up things and I'm kind of a little messed up myself. So bear with me. I've done some things off camera, like I uh, got my chocolate warm, but I'm not even sure it's warm anymore because it sat for a bit. So while I'm talking to you and finishing up, um, I toasted the marshmallows. I don't know if you can see them. They're pretty toasted. I'm just hoping it's not going to be too uh, bad of a textural difference. Fingers crossed. Like, I keep doing that and it's not really helping me much. The cakes are done. One of them has sunk. And, um, yeah, I haven't started making the frosting yet. I'm not sure I'm gonna do all that fancy drizzling down the side business, but I do have these plastic squeeze bottles that I can put the rest of the chocolate in that I might do it that way with. I might just, you know, put it in there anyway, because it would be easier to layer it on the cake as well. So I'm gonna pour my chocolate ganache in here, hopefully. <laughs> I just had a funnel out too. Warm cream. And pour it over that. You let it sit for a minute. So yeah, computer just said, oh, you have no more space. Sorry, bye-bye. And turned off. So I'm not even sure what you last saw. So <laughs> we're just gonna have to keep going. So I'm gonna start, um, this is our crumble. Got nice and toasted. I don't really consider it crumble. I just consider it crushed graham crackers because I don't know that the butter did anything but toast the graham crackers. All right, so we've done that, we've done that. We're on to making the frosting. So I did my marshmallows and the next thing I need to do, um, yeah. I don't know why I have to whew, scrape it off of there that it's gonna stick or something, but the sill pad works wonderful. I did a great job with keeping it all pretty stick free. And now I wanna stir my um, chocolate ganache here and hopefully be able to get that into this. Oh, how fun. Here we go. Let me get you on camera here. That's the whole point, right? On to the marshmallow fluff frosting. Or back to it anyway. We did that. So in the mixing bowl, we're gonna put the egg whites, okay, the salt, and the powdered sugar. Oh, my salt is sticking. Okay. And this is like a lot, it's 24 ounces of powdered sugar. Am I whisking? I'm not really sure I'm convinced that it should be, I'm gonna start it on low, cause low, makes sense, right? Oh, I see. The egg whites kind of came up from the bottom really quick and helped to alleviate the, the flying of the powdered sugar into the air. Once that five minutes is up, we're gonna add our vanilla. I'm gonna pour that in there. I'm gonna let that whip up for a split second.
Maybe turn it down just as coach. And I'm gonna stop that, and then the butter. Now, the, the part I find intriguing is that she never says, you know, cut it or any of that nature. She just says, add the room temperature butter. Fun, huh? So melt it a little soft and we're gonna just go with it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do one stick at a time. I, I can't see doing them all at once. It just doesn't seem logical to me. Let me maybe turn it down a little bit. Stick number two. Okay, anytime I turn. Okay, once I get it all in there, I'm gonna mix it on high for eight to 10 minutes. All right, guys, I went ahead and made the rest of the marshmallow. So after you add the butter, uh, you add the marshmallow or marshmallow fluff. I'm gonna tell you, if you're using regular marshmallow, you're better off adding a little bit of cream to it too, like very little, maybe a tablespoon or so, because the marshmallow is pretty sticky. And I feel like I lost a lot of it on my uh, <laughs> paddle attachment. So my other suggestion is to spray your paddle attachment before you... So yes, my cake kind of fell and it's a little doughy in the center, but I kind of like it that way. So, oh, and our ganache is kind of cooling off. Of course, let me throw this back in the microwave for a second. So the first layer is the ganache, I believe. So the assembly is ganache, spread with a spatula, <laughs> spatula. And then um, the next layer is a, a scoop or so of the buttercream and then spread that. And then, the next layer is, I'm just saying it out loud for myself as well. So I'm gonna throw like a good couple, two, three. We have to save some for the drippage. I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or not, but so we wanna spread it evenly. It doesn't say about anything about going down the sides. I'm assuming I just leave it sitting on the top. Okay, I had a little bite of the graham cracker cake and it's pretty tasty. I would say it's not as sweet as I expected it to be, but I'm also taking, I had to take into consideration that it's gonna get sweeter with all this other stuff, with this chocolate and the graham crackers and the, all that fun stuff. And then the next is, oh, I should add a, a scooper for my, I like doing it with scoopers. Just because <laughs> I feel like it measures it out a little bit. Okay. So the next is. Now, the nice thing about the marshmallow was that you're gonna get flecks of the actual, like, outside of the marshmallow, the toasty bits. But I would say it got pretty sticky. And if you're gonna use regular marshmallow, the other thing I suggest is not to not use the whisk part right after you add the marshmallow. But the whisk is all gummed up from the marshmallow, so I would suggest just, you know, doing the paddle part, the paddle attachment. It's probably the easiest. I think we could do another scoop. And the other nice thing about using just marshmallow and not the fluff is that, you, like I said, you get a little bit of the crusty outer coating of the marshmallow, which I'm not sure you would get with the fluff because it, it has kind of when you when they're in the bag you know they have that kind of powdery look to them and I think that's what kind of makes them get that crust when I cooked them in the oven all right so there's our layer of the marshmallow do we need another one possibly since I only have two layers right why not now again this is not this is not healthy. <laughs> this is not healthy by any means. And I like to leave it high, the, the frosting a little bit, because 
You want to be able to see it from the side, you know? All right, and then after the marshmallow comes the crumble. And then I would also say about the crumble is that for future and probably for the birthday cake, I would um, probably use a little bit of brown sugar when I cook it so that it comes to more of like a candied kind of thing, you know? Now keep in mind, we need a little bit for the bottom part edge of the cake outside on the outside. But other than that, we only have two layers, not three. So it might be fun to pile it up a little bit. All right, and then what comes after that? Place second layer and repeat. Ooh, you know what I forgot? Is that my second layer isn't as big. <laughs> isn't as wide. Oh, good, it covers it up anyway. Yeah, that might be something you want to take into consideration if you're do using like two different shapes or two different sizes. Um, you're gonna run into a little bit of like over edging. But, oh my gosh, that tasted. I got a little bit of everything on my thumb. S'more, it was a s'more, okay. Ganache, ganache. I'm gonna let it drip over the side, I don't care. Maybe we'll get a little on this edge over here. I think I'm gonna let you go for a minute so I can maybe surprise you a little bit, okay? I'll be back in a few. All right guys, here it is. I'm gonna call it a mountain because it weighs like 800 pounds, I swear to God. My chocolate is dripping, but it's only dripping where it wants to. Explain that one. Peyton said it kind of looks like a balding man, but it also looks like the mountain effect I was going for. Uh, I did decide that I think I need to do a little bit uh, more of a finer crumb for the crumble, but other than that, Peyton, should we try it now? Okay, so if you want to cut, she wants nothing more. She's tried, sorry. She's tried all the components, except for the cake, and we hope the cake won't ruin the whole experience. And I have no clue how to cut this. I'm scared, guys. I'm scared. I need to be on camera, but I'm like too far away. We need to adjust that. Stop it. I think I was supposed to refrigerate it again after I um, decorated it the second time, but there goes nothing, guys. I don't even think I hit cake. I'm really not sure, guys, if there's cake in here. Is there cake in here? I don't know. Okay. This might just be all frosting. Oh, good grief. Oh, oh, there's cake. Oh, Yahoo. Okay, if I could just get it to come apart. Well, there it is, guys. I can't get it any closer. There we go. I think we could do with a lot less frosting myself. Personally, no, Peyton thinks it's wonderful. It's a good idea. Taking a little chocolate. Here's our bites. All right, you ready? <laughs> so is mine. A hell of a lot less frosting, I would say. I could have probably made two thirds of what I made. With all the issues I've had today. And I've had a lot. Tell you what, the frosting melts in your butt now. I can't even, it's like so light because it's like eight pounds of butter in it. Not eight pounds. Cake isn't that No, for how heavy this freaking cake is, it really is kind of light. I think it helps the, the frosting that's on the lighter side. Mm -hmm. But, holy shit. This is a f This is a freaking winner. Smells a little bit longer as well. I yeah, do I get the crunchy bits in the love the crunchy bits. It's like toffee almost, right? Yeah. And I'm glad I added a little bit of cream because it was a little sticky. Because it's not really made for um, regular marshmallows. It's made for you're supposed to use marshmallow fluff. 
but oh my gracious, this whole thing is just freaking frosty. I would definitely cut down. I would make two thirds of what we made. Yeah, show that picture. <laughs> but it is so good. Here, I'll put this this way too. There's the level of frosting I put on there. And then if you move it, you can see, see the cake cut open. What's that called? Cross. Oh my gosh. Cross section. So, there she is. Oh my god. Holy sh sh shnikes. Um, she, I am shaking. It is so heavy, but it is so good. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Okay, well... I'm gonna let you guys go. I think I've talked about starting anew and how I already had a, a setback. All in the same episode. And tears were shed. And I and I moaned to my children. And everything calmed me a little bit. I was still a little stressed. I was still worried about what was gonna end result was gonna be. And it turned out amazing and I'm so extremely happy. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna let you go now. I've held you hostage long enough. I want, I just have to say, I want you to go have a good day, go do great things, be your best self, and please live your best blessed life. Woo, year five, yay!